Hello and welcome to this video series on page layout and design strategy. Um, in this video, uh, we're going to focus primarily on understanding fixed and fluid layout. Sometimes you'll hear fluid as flexible. And so um, when you're developing your web application, you have to figure out, um, are you going to have a fixed website or a fluid website? Or you can have a mixture of both uh, within your web page. We're not going to spend a lot of time on adaptive and responsive layouts, but I will make mention of it and show you an example of it in this video. And in the following video, we'll talk about box modeling and then some of the CSS properties that we'll use to make sure that our boxes fashion out to the way that we would desire them to look. So on this slide here, I, uh, I have posed the question of what type of layout will you choose for your site? Um, so you'll see a few um, examples of layouts. So you have fixed or static. Essentially, your site... Uh, you're going to have a width um, that's going to contain everything that's going to be visually rendered in the browser. And then you might set it to margin auto. They will give equal portion to the right and to the left. Fixed or fluid uh, or liquid is where um, your site would expand with the browser. Uh, and typically you will use percentage measurement units or a measurement unit of percentage or some type of relative measurement unit uh, when you're implementing fixed fluid uh, flexible layout. And we'll do an example of both of these here in just a second. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about adaptive or responsive layout. We're going to have a whole video series that focuses on responsive layout design. But I will make mention of it or I'll show you an example of it uh, within the site. As mentioned, uh, with fixed layout, you're going to use what we call absolute measurement units, which is pixel. Um, and there's, some, there's a few other ones like inch or centimeter. But typically, you'll see pixels used for fixed. And in fluid, you'll use relative measurement units such as percentage. REM, uh, and there's a few other uh, measurement units, but typically uh, you'll see percentages used for fluid layout. Here's a few examples um, just to kind of demonstrate uh, the difference between fixed and fluid. So if we go to the White Sox website, uh, you'll see that there's a mixture of both fixed and fluid. Um, the banner of the White Sox website is uh, what we would consider fluid, right? It takes up the full browser width. And so no matter how I stretch this website, right, the browser is going to stretch with, I'm sorry, the banner is going to stretch with the website. And the same thing if I would expand the browser width, uh, that banner is going to take up the full width. But then here, there's a section of within the White Sox website, which contains some other components such as the latest news and the score and this middle column section here. Now that's fixed, right? Um, there's a set width, there's a container that's containing all this information. And what a lot of companies like to do is advertise in the background, right? So you'll see that there's this picture of the Chevrolet new vehicle uh, that they're leasing, releasing, but they put this background picture uh, in the back of the website. Uh, just to see if I could quickly find the container for this middle section here. Let's see if I can do that real quick. Yeah, here it is. Oh, here it is. Right, and so if you look at where my mouse is hovering, uh, there's margin right, margin left auto, uh, which is basically uh, is centering the website. So if I were to take that off, you'll see that that's now the site is not centered. Everything is floating to the left. Uh, but then here, if I take off the width, uh, this is where I would make this site fluid. And you'll see that now that middle that, that what used to be the middle section is not to go the full width of the web page. Um, but all the developer did of this website was basically put a width and they did margin auto. Uh, to center the site and that would be an example of a this is the example of a fixed portion within their website uh, here's another site and this site is truly fluid uh, where all the various pieces the components uh, in this site uh, respond with the browser uh, and what i mean by res uh, uh, the various components is that um, that the backgrounds for this particular section where my mouse is hovering for coats for kids some are given 45 years that is going to expand with the browser so if i were to condense this and expand it out it still takes up the full width of the browser now there are some components some components in here that are fixed um, such as these three areas here let's see if I can just show you that yeah so here it has a uh, div class grid uh, and it has a width uh, of 1340 uh, which is over here and then margin auto uh, like I said, when you're looking at fixed and fluid, um, most sites nowadays uh, typically have a mixture of both fixed and fluid. Uh, just like the White Sox, their, their banner here, or not their banner, but the header is fluid. But then this section down here is fixed uh, with a particular width. 
Um, so let's go and do a quick example of this here. Um, so I have a basic HTML document. And what I want to do here is add a container and center, uh, make the site fixed. And then also I want to center this website within the browser. So here I have already have two style rules and this body, this first style rule here is the body selector or the body element. And this is a small version of kind of doing a CSS reset of um, negating some of the CSS that the browser is applying to my document. And so here I'm doing margin zero and padding zero. Uh, and what that does here is basically overrides uh, the active white space that every browser applies to the to the browser when you render uh, your site in a web page. And so like I said, a small version of a CSS reset. But then here is where I'm going to apply some declarations. So the first declaration I'm going to apply here is going to be with, and this is wherever you want to, if you want to make the site fix, uh, I'm going to contain everything that gets visually rendered. In this case here, I created an element called div ID equals container and I want to contain everything that gets visually rendered and that's going to be within the container tag or the container, the element that has the ID container. And so I just give us a thousand pixels. And then I'm going to give it margin auto. And just so that we can see the actual uh, container, what I'm going to do here is make the background for my body. I want to make that a light gray and I'll make the container here white not the container but I'll do background color and I'll also put a box shadow around this element here so I'll say three pixels three pixels let's do 12 pixels and let's do a darker gray and then also because of a width uh, so we can actually see the container I'm going to give it a height and the height I want to do is a hundred viewport height so it'll take up the full view, uh, height of the browser so if we save this I'm going to go ahead and render this in the browser so I'll right click and I'll open in other browsers in this case I'm going to choose Chrome and then here's our container right and so this is, um, in this case here, I'm making a whole entire site fixed. And then if I wanted to, I can go ahead and advertise in this back, uh, in these outer portions to the right and to the left. And that's what some companies do. And we've seen that with the White Sox website where their site is fixed, but then they would use this outer skirts to advertise. In this case, they're advertising uh, this company here. All right, so that's an example of fixed static layout where you're using absolute measurement unit uh, to uh, give your site a width or give a particular component of your site a width and then you would do some type of margin auto. You don't have to do margin auto, um, but fixing your site is you're giving it a, a absolute measurement unit. Uh, with fluid and flexible, you're gonna give it a relative measurement unit. And one of those relative measurement units may be a percentage. Um, and so here, if we go back to our example, if we change this 100, 100 pixels or 1000 pixels to let's say 80 percent right um this site is still considered um i would say it's still implementing a container but uh this container is going to basically respond to the browser's width and it's going to only take up 80 percent of uh, the browser's window and so it's fluid and it's flexible uh in the sense that it's going to flex with um, the browser or it's going to respond to the browser and this some people say is that responsive design um, you'll see that responsive design involves a lot more than just making or using relative measurement units but it also in, involves media queries and some other things that we'll discuss a little bit later but you'll see that when you are going to responsive design when you're trying to implement responsive de design you will begin to use relative measurement units but in this case here this would be considered fluid or flexible. Um, and a lot of times you'll see that people will just basically take up the 100% of the browser window uh, so that their site is um, going to completely respond to the full width of the browser viewport, the viewport area of the browser. So that's fixed and fluid. Hopefully you had a good understanding of that. Um, in the next video here, um, we're going to talk about box modeling and how to add padding and margin uh, and talk about width and max width, min width, uh, and the same thing, max height, min height, uh, and how to add some of those CSS properties to the various boxes within our site. 
Um, I would say go ahead and pause this video, watch this video here, fixed fluid, adaptive responsive. It basically kind of goes over some of the concepts that we just went over uh, in this video. Um, but I think it's about a minute long. But go ahead and pause this video, watch this video, and then we'll get started with our next video on box modeling.